At this time, we're going to call on Brother Dwayne to lead us in a congregational song. Thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me. Many are the blessings that you give unto me. Joy overflow as the mighty sea. Lord, I want to thank you for your love to me. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me. Many are the blessings that you give on to me. Joy overflow as the mighty sea. Lord, I 
Ladies and gentlemen, you are in tune to the International Truth of God television and radio program coming to you from the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, situated with headquarters at 2431 Frankfurt Avenue, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19125, where Pastor Gino Jennings is our leader and general overseer. At this time, I'm going to call on Minister Stephen Williams from the United States of America to lead us in prayer. Father God, we do come to once again in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father God, once again for your many blessings. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, again for your goodness and for your kindness that you shower down toward us. My God, look down upon this service this afternoon. My God, bless the many souls that have come out to hear the words of truth. My God, open up their hearts, open up their minds and their understanding. My God, that they might understand the scriptures. Bless, Father God, that souls may hear thine word and repent of their sins and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ and be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost and have a mind, my God, to begin to follow in the words of truth. Bless, my God, Pastor Jennings this day. Help him, O oh God, to continue to declare thine word, my God, in clarity of truth. My God, help him to preach, my God, and teach the words of truth with the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. My God, bless every mother, every father today. My God, every child that hears the words of God, help them also. My God, that they also may come into the knowledge of the truth. Bless throughout Jamaica. My God, that the words of the Lord may ring out. My God, that souls that don't understand, my God, may get an understanding. My God, the one to follow in the ways of God. My God, bless the service. My God, bless that those that hear the words. My God, bless the sick. My God, raise them up off their beds of affliction. My God, bless, my God, those that are in prison, in the heart, my God, and in the mind. My God, that you may free them this day. My God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. My God, we thank you this day. My God, for your many blessings. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness and for your kindness. My God, we do pray and ask all these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, you are in tune to the International Truth of God television and radio program. We are recording today from Kingston, Jamaica. From Kingston, Jamaica, specifically from the Holy Childhood High School. Uh, at, it is a Stephanie Hall Auditorium. The service is being recorded on the afternoon of uh, Sunday, the 16th, December 2007. It is our eighth national youth convention. At this time, I'm going to call on the combined group of the youth from Jamaica and the United States to give us a song.
truth of God coming to you from the first church of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can write to the church by writing to Pastor Gino Jennings. The address is 2431 Frankfurt Avenue, Philadelphia, PA. The post office box is 7745. You can also visit the church website. It's www.truthofgod.com. That's www.truthofgod.com. You can also send us an email. It's truthofgod at errols.com. That's truthofgod at errols.com. Or you can also call a local church. It's 963-2093. 963-2093. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to sit quietly and listen attentively as I present to you the man of God. He's an ambassador, the anointed servant of God. He's our leader, teacher, and guide, our general overseer, Pastor Gino Jennings. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Greetings, brothers and sisters. We are thankful again to the one God for his divine wisdom, his perfect and infallible understanding of all things. We thank him for the prophets. <clears throat> we are indebted to him for the revelation that he gave to his servants, the apostles. We are thankful to God for his great wisdom, his perfect understanding. We're glad to be here in Kingston, Jamaica. This has been a very good meeting this year. <clears throat> Uh, we had a very, very uh, beautiful time on Friday evening and also last night. So many people had questions. And we are thankful uh, to be able to have the proper answer to give you in reference to your question. Uh, there are many people, as I've been saying for years, that have been going to church and they are not allowed to question their pastor. They are not allowed to question their elder, their bishop, their so-called apostle. Uh, but as I often say, when you go to church and you're giving all this money in church, well, you should be able to question the preacher about anything he preached. And he should be able to answer you from the scriptures about what he preached. If he cannot produce scripture with a divine interpretation of the scripture that he produced, then I encourage anybody and everybody, stop wasting your time going to church. <clears throat> I often tell the folk, if you want to go to hell, go free. Don't give no money. Save your money and go to hell free of charge. To my television viewers that get a chance to see this program, we're here in Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, I want to thank, uh, what is our station here? What's the call letters of it? The Air Hour Program? CBM? CBM. I want to thank CBM for airing this program without cutting out anything. We were on TVJ to begin with, and TVJ kind of got frightened because of the amount of calls that was coming into the station. But I tell my viewers, uh, don't call no television station that aired the program. Why would you call them? You should be calling us. You shouldn't complain to the station. We are the dog that's barking by God's permission. So you should put a leash on us if you're able. So I'm thankful for, the, uh, for CVM that's airing this program and uh, not willing to cut anything out, but bring it just like uh, God have it, straight up, raw and direct and precise and to the point. We were able to meet uh, more ministers <coughs> here in Jamaica who expressed interest to working along with us. You know what I find is interesting? Every place in the world that the truth of God goes, we get results. That's almost unheard of in a day like today. Every country, every city, every town, every village where we travel, whether it's in Africa, India, the Caribbean, in Europe, it doesn't matter where it is. Every place where the truth of God goes, 
You have many people who are sick and tired of the hypocrisy of religion, who really want something real and want something right. I can't even count the many people who came to me since I've been here. When are you going to open up a church? When are you going to have a church here? We need some place to go. Because of the truth of God telecast, some of the viewers here in Jamaica have stopped going to church. I have encouraged the viewers in Jamaica, you don't need to go to church unless you're getting the right thing. If you're not getting the right thing, why burn your gas? Why wear out your shoe leather? Why hitch a ride? Just stay home and look at the program and learn to live by the laws of God that you're hearing. Now, uh, to the viewers that are watching throughout America, I know uh, you may see that this is different because it is not our normal format, but what we like to do is kind of bring the uh, different areas of the world where we travel when we are able back to you, <coughs> as we did in India. Uh, we had a very, very excellent meeting in India. I mean, as far as you can see, it was nothing but people. And uh, we was able, by God's permission, to bring the meeting back to the viewers of America. And God willing, in 2008, we'll be back in India in February. Also, we will be in, back in Sierra Leone, West Africa. And then from there, we'll be in the country of Liberia. And then from there, we go straight over, God willing, to the country of Nigeria. What are we doing? Why are we traveling like we are? I'm not traveling for popularity. No. And I'm certainly not getting paid for traveling. Oh, no. No. And no one is paying me to preach. Because I tell you, I haven't found a person yet that I pay you for killing them. Amen. No, no. We kill you free of charge. Mm -hmm. We come in your country, your town, your village. We'll break up your home. We'll break up your church. We'll break up any racket you have. And we do it free. That's right. You don't have to pay us. Isn't that wonderful? That's right. <laughs> so, brothers and sisters and television viewers, and to the many hundreds that have wrote us and emailed us out of Jamaica, we thank you kindly uh, for your letters. And because we're here in Jamaica, we're going to kind of go through some emails and try to answer some of the questions that you may have uh, right here in Jamaica. We're going to get some questions that came to us just from viewers here in Jamaica. We're going to get a few of them. Then afterward, God willing, we're going to tackle you with the book. All right, come on, Brother Gary. Let's see what we have, and we'll try to get into as many questions as we can. That's coming right out of Jamaica. All right, let's have it. Well, this is from Miss Edwards. It says, what does the Bible say about a woman who had a child out of wedlock but is no longer with the child's father? Can she get married should she meet a suitable partner, or should she remain single? <laughs> What the scripture says about a woman that have a child out of wedlock, well, the scripture says she committed fornication. Mm -hmm. Give me the seventh chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians, That's if you right. will, move quick. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we'll straighten you out and put you on the right track, God willing. Amen. Listen at this, television viewer, let's have it. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and at verse 1. All right. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me. What did the apostle Paul tell us? It is good for a man not to touch a woman. Only Paul will come up with that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Man will not say it's good not to touch a woman. No way. Mm -hmm. Man don't agree with that type of scripture. No way. Man said it's good to touch her. Mm -hmm. The reason why God says it's good not to touch her because God wants to avoid certain things for happening amongst the human family. That's right. That's right. Listen at this. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. To avoid fornication. <laughs> to avoid Fornication. Now, I know, viewers, many of you say, well, you're having safe sex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm hmm all Amen. Right. All right. Because you're using condoms and all type of other instruments That's right. upon and also inserted into the physical body. Right. The only indulgence that's safe is when you're married. That's right. Well, sometimes they ain't safe. True. Am I right? <laughs> that's right. Because if he's out there doing what he shouldn't be doing, and if she's out there doing what she shouldn't be doing, then rest assured you, you're not safe. That's right. That's right. Uh, so when you are safe is when you are married and you're being faithful one towards the other mm -hmm. without any outside participation. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. Right. The book says to avoid fornication, let every man do what? Have his own wife. Have his own wife. And, and let every woman have her own husband. So therefore, when you have a child out of a wetlock, sister, well, you have committed fornication. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the child is an innocent victim of the mistake that you and the gentleman have made. If you have never been married, and if the man never was married, then yes, you can get married because you never was married before. That's right. So therefore, if you're wise, you don't want to live that type of life of just having child after child after child after child and never be a married woman. That's right. You don't want to make yourself so accessible to a bunch of men. Amen. At the same time, you don't want to be naive and let some good for nothing low life that call himself a man who just want to use you as nothing but an instrument to bounce upon. That's right. In order for a man to respect you, you first got to respect yourself. Amen. And if a man going to tell you, well, babe, you know, lay, lay that rap to you, baby, I love you. And, you know, mm. let's go on and have a baby. Then I married you. Let me tell you something, woman. Hmm. Don't you give no man no baby based upon the promise that he going to marry you. No. That's right. Because the truth of the matter is, in today's society, men do not mind getting women pregnant. But in today's society, it's hard to find a man that has stepped up to the plate and take the responsibility for his child. That's, That's right. right. Many of the men, they want the baby, but they don't want the responsibility of taking care of what they helped me. That's right. So no, don't fall for it. Don't fall for it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So if you had a child out of wedlock and you made that mistake, don't make it habit. Right. What do you mean don't make it habit? Well, you shouldn't have a long list of men, about seven men, and every child got seven different fathers. That's right. No, all things must come to an end. That's right. If you're not married, then we'll teach you the law of marriage. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Some people go to marriage counselors. Why in the world would you go to a marriage counselor who done divorced their wife? All right. Man. That's right. He's not in condition to give you no counsel. He need help himself. That's yeah. right. So yes, the scriptures advise you to marry. Mm -hmm. Let the young women marry and bring forth Children. children and you need to have a preacher who will teach you properly yes. about the law of marriage it's a very in-depth law right. to men that are listening and watching mm -hmm. because sometimes men perception about marriage is different from women mm -hmm. what do you mean we teach our women to be an established woman before you marry that's right what do you mean don't you sit around and look for a man to do for you what you can do for yourself that's right now you listen to the old man amen right. don't you sit around and wait for a man to take care of you and wait for a man to do this if you've got strength even though it is not mandatory by scriptural law for a woman to work mm -hmm. at the same time you want to experience some form of independence right how to take care of yourself how to do for yourself the reason why that is important because today young people not staying together that's right and you don't want to find yourself handicapped not able to do anything and then that man pick up and leave and leave you with a bunch of children while he's running around living like a dog Amen. and now you're stuck raising the children not able to do nothing else but rely on the government to take care of what's not theirs that's right are you listening to the old troublemaker nevertheless right. listen nevertheless nevertheless to avoid fornication to avoid fornication let every man let every man have his own wife his own brother if you don't want the responsibility as a husband and as a father mm -hmm. then stay to yourself that's right. That's right. and let me get right raw with you woman you ain't marrying no man so you can take care of him and raise him that's right are you listening to me that's right if he's already lazy and don't want to work he's a fool to marry him yes, amen sir. not only that don't you marry no man who's going to put his hands on you. That's right. Yes. Don't you go marry no man going to put his hands on you. Amen. For if there's any women here and there's any women in Jamaica that's in a relationship where you're being beat by your husband, hmm. slapped by your husband, because most times the indications are there before you say I do. That's, that's right. true. That's this right. is why we advise people that are engaged, give yourself plenty of time before you marry. Mm. Right. That way you get a chance to experience how angry you can see him. That's All right. right. You know, you, you and him have a heated argument. If he's already drawn back right. before you say I do, mm -hmm. when he's drawn back, you tip out. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You tip out. Mm -hmm. That's right. Let me tell you something, mister. You're not a man. Mm -hmm. You're incompetent as a man. Amen. You're good for absolutely nothing. You yeah. are a worthless man. That's, That's right. Anytime a man will lay his hands on his woman. Amen. You beat your wife. Mm -hmm. You slap your wife. Because mm -hmm. most times the man that do that, he won't do that to another man. No, he won't. 
No, not at all. No, he won't. So you take your time in reference to getting married. Take your time and learn the way of holding this. It'll teach you uh, what to have. And, 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 and one thing, woman, this is what you never want to do. You never want to appear to be desperate. Amen. No, right. you don't want to appear to be a desperate woman. Yes. Someone say, well, she only asked you one question, but that one question covers all this. That's right. Because most women don't know how to protect themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So therefore, knowledge is protection. Amen. Knowledge is protection. See, a lot of you folks going to church, jumping and shouting, because a lot of uh, men come to church to do uh, women shopping. Women shopping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's right. Am I right? That's, That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> yes. Yes, sir. Everything that come to church ain't got Jesus on their mind. Oh, Don't be no. a fool. Oh, Amen. No. Some folks sing about Jesus. Jesus love me for this. I know because the Bible tells me so. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. But uh, is Jesus on your mind when you come to that church? Amen. There's some men come to church for the sole purpose to shop for women. Yeah, yes. that's right. Because even the men in the street know there are some women in the church. They're so in tune with Jesus, mm. but yet they're not in tune with what's around them. That's right. So what we teach is for the mind is to be well rounded mm -hmm. in wisdom, knowledge and divine understanding. Mm -hmm. That way you are in tune to the characteristics of the world. Mm -hmm. And you also become in tune with the nature and the wisdom of God. That's right. And when you become in tune with both, mm -hmm. then you will not be another victim stuck with a baby or children with no father That's right. to take care of them, raise them, teach them. That's right. Because woman, if you got a, a man, hmm. because when you say, I have a husband, mm. that's having more than a man. Mm. Amen. Because anybody can have a man. That's just right. Just because he's a male. Mm -hmm. But when you say, I have a husband, husband. he loved God, because the true definition of man is a man that feared God, reverenced God, and obedience to God first. That's right. And then if he loved God, he won't have no problems properly loving that wife, because the wisdom of God will teach him how to love that wife. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. And when you love your wife, you'll know how to treat her. You'll know how, you don't mind taking care, of, taking care of her. Because woman, if you got a man that really love you, you ain't got to force him to do nothing. Likewise, you husbands. You ain't got to force them to take care of you. You don't right. have to drag them in and out of court uh, for child support. That's, That's right. right. Are you listening? That's, That's right. He'll step up to the plate and take care of those 23 children he got. Oh, That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the book says, likewise, ye husbands. Give chapter and verse for this. First Peter chapter 3 and at verse 8. Yeah. Likewise, ye husbands. Likewise, ye husbands. Dwell with them. Dwell with them. Who is the them? Mm -hmm. Dwell with the wife. According to knowledge. According to knowledge. You see, you got to dwell with your wife with understanding because all women are not the same. That's yeah. right. All women are not the same. Every, you, no one, there are some men that say, I hate women. And the reason why some women say they hate women because they may have had a bad experience with one or a few women. So out of ignorance, they indict yeah. all the women. Some women do the same thing. They had a bad experience with a man or men that was used and abused and uh, just butchered. Right. So therefore, they indict all men and generalize all men as being nothing but dogs. But there are some good men, but the problem is, it's hard to find them. That's right. There are some good women, but the problem is, it's hard to find. It is just as easy to find a good man and a good woman today as it is to find a two-legged cat <laughs> running for the President of the United States that wear contact lenses mm -hmm. and he's already self-employed <laughs> amen that's how difficult it is mm -hmm. all right come on gary let's get the next question next one from um n palmer it says why is it a problem for two christians of two different denominations to get married for instance a pentecostal and a church of god the reason why it is not good mm -hmm. For a man and a woman of two different religious beliefs mm -hmm. to get married mm -hmm. because the children is going to be in the middle of the religious confrontation. That's right. A good example. <laughs> the brother may be a Mormon. 
Mm. The so-called Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Devils. Amen. That's right. <coughs> That's true. The brother may be a Mormon. Right. The Mormon believe there are five gods. Five gods. Adam, their first god is the founder of their religion, Joseph Smith. Mm -hmm. Joseph Smith had about 30 or 40 or 50 something wives. Mm. His partner in his crime was Brigham Young, mm -hmm. who had about 20 or 30 something wives. Amen. The religion of the Mormons got its name from an artificial angel that came out of hell and stopped in New York. That's right. Named Mermon. That's right. And had some writing under a rock <laughs> thousands of years later on the scene. Mm -hmm. And this is where the Book of Mormon supposedly originated. Hmm. Now, imagine this Mormon marrying a woman that believed the book that says, Hero Israel, the Lord, the Lord, Lord our God, God is one. one. It's going to be a confrontation. Yes, That's it will right. be. He's trying to get you to pray to five gods, and she's telling you, no, it's just one. Mm -hmm. He Amen. don't believe in the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. That's Amen. Right. She believes you must repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Right. He don't believe that you must speak in tongues to the have the Holy Ghost. That's right. She believed that you must receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues that the Spirit of God give utterance, just like they did on the day of Pentecost. That's right. So this is where religion will clash. What fellowship? Listen, 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 Jamaica, get this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and at verse 14. Because some of you now is probably experiencing the same oh, yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. The same thing, That's the right. same confrontation, mm -hmm. confrontation of religion. That's right. Right. Now the truth of the matter is this. If God is one, and he is, God Almighty have never started a variety of religions. That's right. Never. Never. No. Look at it in Jamaica alone. You have the Baptist, the Methodist, the Presbyterian, the Lutheran, mm -hmm. the Pentecostal, the Apostolic, right. the non-denominational, mm -hmm. the African Methodist Episcopal. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me one God is here in Jamaica and he gave you all these religions? Mm. Lord. Like you got chicken, turkey, <laughs> pork. Right. You think God is that ignorant? No, sir. No, all right. these religions, a Baptist Christian, a Methodist That's Christian, right. a non-denominational Christian, That's right. a Pentecostal Christian, mm. an apostolic Christian. Mm. Are you that ignorant? Amen. No. To think that one God is the author of all this confusion? No. One Lord. God Almighty said he's not the author of confusion. That's and right. if God is not the author of confusion, who gave you the right to have a religion that's not scriptural? That's yes. right. That's it. That's the it. only one that starts these religions is the devil. That's yeah. right. That's right. If you don't believe me, if you're a Baptist today, all you got to do is go to the scripture and see if you find a Baptist church in the Bible. You'll mm. never find it. Never find it. Go to the Bible and see can you find a Catholic church. Mm -hmm. Go to the Bible and see can you find Jehovah Witnesses. Amen. Right. Knocking on your door early in the morning disturbing right. your good breakfast <laughs> with a right. comic book. That's right. All right. Sir. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? Uh, Amen. See can you find that stuff in the book. All right. Are you listening to me? Amen. And because many people, they say, well, Pastor Jennings, you don't show love. You speak out against religions. Listen. Listen. If a man break in your house mm -hmm. and rape your children, mm -hmm. will you not speak out against his conduct? Oh, yes. Amen. Oh, yes. Preachers have broke into the subconscious of your mind. Mm -hmm. That's right. And have raped you and deprived you of intelligence. That's right. So therefore, the preachers know that most church people are ignorant when it comes to the scriptures. That's why they have been successful in duking you, conning you, deceiving you. Amen. So you go to some church and throw a few dollars in the pan and sing a good song and feel good, and he Amen. get up and throw his hands over his ears and tell you, "Ain't that all right? Ha, God gonna do this." Ha. God going to do that. Ha. That's right. Shut that noise up. Oh, yeah. up. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I don't want to hear that noise. That's Amen. Right. That's, That's right. the way your preachers are here in Jamaica. Amen. Mm -hmm. They are a bunch of clowns. Wow. Yes. Entertainers. That's, That's right. right. Glory. Rob you out of your money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
You go to church and go home, and the only thing you're going to get in return is eternal hell. That's Lord right. Jesus. I'm not over the air to make you my friend. That's mm -hmm. right, sir. I'm over the air to save your soul from hell. That's, That's right. it. Whether you love me or hate me, I yeah. can live with either. Preach Preach Amen. Preach it. Amen. Preach it, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. The book says what? 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Listen. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You see, if they are an unbeliever and you are a believer, the scripture forbids you to be connected with them. Be yes. ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What fellowship? What fellowship? Hath righteousness, hath righteousness with unrighteousness. See, if you're not married and a person is an unbeliever, you don't go into that marriage looking at an unbeliever. No. That's right. You got to look past the texture of his hair oh, and yeah. the smile that he have and the cheap cologne that he use. That's right. That's right. <laughs> look past all that. Look past the car he drives. Oh, yeah. Amen. Look past the money that he has to offer That's and right. look at your soul. Look further than the altar standing there making vows. That's mm -hmm. right. Look further than that. That's right. Because the victims of this confrontation will be your children. Amen. Your husband may believe he can drink all he wants. Mm hmm the woman may know that the scripture says wine is a mock and strong drink is raging. He that is deceived thereby is not wise. That's right. So if you bring all this liquor in the house, mm -hmm. then what's going to happen? You're going to have a confrontation. Yes. Amen. You're going right. to have an argument. Oh, yeah. And all this can be avoided if the woman will take her time. That's right. And if the man will take his time. That's right. And let things be properly evaluated by the scriptures. The book says what? What fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? You hear that? What fellowship has righteousness? All right, here the sister repented of her sins, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, had the baptism of the Holy Ghost, striving to live right. Hey, he's out there gambling and smoking and partying and living like a dog and want to rap and wear his pants hanging down That's and his right. underwear shooting up. That's right. Cigarette hanging out of his mouth and puffing like he's puffed the magic dragon. What fellowship? What fellowship? Hath righteousness with unrighteousness. What fellowship? What fellowship? Woman, if you wise, you want God in your relationship. That's right. Are you listening to me? That's right. Man, if you wise, you want God to be the center of your relationship. That's right. God will be the binding force. Yeah, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Between that man That's right. and that woman. That's See, it. if you go into a relationship putting God first, yes. you will move slow. That's right. That's right. That's right. You'll move slow. That yes. way you know what you're getting into. That's, That's right. right. You know, because it'd be a sad thing. You get married, then you find out what you married was a oh, faggot. Oh, God. Oh, yes. Not a man. My Amen. God, my God. Wouldn't that be a bad chick? Amen. I mean, it's bad enough, sister, you may come home and find your husband, you know, with another woman. She can get over that. But to come home and find your husband with a man? With a man. And here's your husband is a, supposed to be hardworking. That's right. And he's hardworking all, all right. right. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah, he's hard working. He's working that which is unseemly. That's right. So if you are properly taught the scriptures, see, we, we don't do like most preachers. When brothers and sisters of the congregation come and say, well, Bishop, I'm getting married. And then I say, congratulations. No, I don't. No. No. That's right. I meet one-on-one -on -one with that brother because mm -hmm. I want to see what he's made of. That's right. I have several meetings with him. Because I believe the woman should truly know inside out what she's getting. That's right. Because you're talking about the rest of your life Amen. being locked down to one man. Amen. It is not like this remarriage and divorce garbage that your pastor is teaching you. No, it's not. Serious, man. You walking around here, divorce, get another one, divorce, get another one, divorce, get another one. Like you trading in cars. You ride it sometime and then you trade it in. That's right. No, uh, not that. Not that. You're bound by the law as long as you both shall live. So therefore, if you're going to marry, doesn't it make sense to do it right the first yes, time? That's Amen. Right. That's right. So if you want your relationship to go right, my strong advice, one, keep everybody out of your business. Mm -hmm. That's right. Two, don't let people take it upon themselves to interject their ideology in your relationship based upon their experiences. Because what may work for them, that don't mean it's going to work for you. That's right. First and foremost, let your relationship be centered around God and his word. And the laws of God will teach you yes. how you should be and how you shouldn't be. So no, the scriptures don't allow 
a believer and a unbeliever to go into marriage that way. That's right. Sometimes you get two unbelievers get married, and then when they get married, later on, one become a believer. That's right. So now they still got their conflict to deal with. Mm -hmm. So if one become a believer, well, you still married. Still married. But you don't go into marriage, one is a believer and one is an unbelieving. That's right. That's All right, so you see, it takes a little time when I answer questions. I love to detail it and break it down and take it apart. That way, we don't leave you no room to say, I didn't know that. That's right. All right, come on, Gary, let's have it. Oh, this one says, I am just writing you this mail to let you know that I like the work you are doing for God. Thank you kindly. And I try to listen to your program every Sunday morning before I go to church. Mm -hmm. I have been a child of God for the past five years. I know that I am not doing all that I should do, should be doing for God. I sometimes find that I cannot even pray. But I know that, I know at times he listened to my heart. Could you give me some advice on how to pray? Oh, yes. The disciples asked the Messiah, mm -hmm. Lord, teach us to pray. Now, Pastor Paul, a man born in Tarsus in the city of Cilicia, came out of the first tribe that gave Israel a king, the tribe of Benjamin, which made Brother Paul a Benjamite. That's right. Paul was made an apostle. Mm -hmm. God sent, God taught, God anointed, God struck, God made, God authorized. Mm -hmm. And the Apostle Paul taught the church in Corinth. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Listen at this. And at verse 15. All right. What is it then? What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. And? And I will pray with the understanding also. Holy. All right. Let's break this down. Break that down. I will pray with the Spirit. For years, preachers have misinterpreted that. And they said, the book says, I will pray in the Spirit. It didn't say that. No. Wait. It says, I will pray with the with, Spirit. With. With. With, mm -hmm. with the Spirit. How can I pray with, with the, spirit. the Spirit? And the book says God is the Spirit. So pray with the Spirit. Pray with God. That's right. Are you getting me? That's right. How can I pray with God? Hmm. Praying with the Spirit, Jesus says, mm -hmm. the words that I, that I speak unto you, yeah, they I, are yeah, spirit, spirit and they are life. Right. So if I pray with the Spirit, that means all the words yes. that I utter to the Lord. None of the words that I use is in contradiction That's right. of the words of God. That's right. In other words, I don't pray out of God's will. Mm -hmm. For example, I'm married. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's no need for me to see some other fine woman mm. no. and then drop down on my knees, oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> looking up to the Most High mm -hmm. and begging him, Lord, <laughs> give me this woman. Mm. That's right. That she may be my wife. That's right. God is not going to break the scriptures. That's no right. way. To give you what you want. No, no. no. Are you listening? That's oh, yeah. right. Because if the book says you're bound by the law as long as you live, mm -hmm. God ain't going to give you a second wife mm -hmm. while your first wife is living, and then somebody lies and say, well, God gave it to me. No, God ain't going to break the scriptures for nobody. No. He asked. No. God will not. Well, someone said, Pastor Jennings, I got my second wife. Yeah, you got it on your own. On your own. Why That's you think the book tell you you're living in adultery? That's right. right. That's if having a second wife was of God, God wouldn't tell you you're living in adultery. That's no. right. Are you listening? James chapter 4 and verse 3. Pray with the Spirit. Pray. Then we get James. Then Amen. he says, pray. With the understanding also. What do I got to understand? I got to understand what the scripture says right. about what I'm asking God about. Yes, That's right. That's now, right. artificial prayer. That's right. Artificial prayer is the teaching that the preachers have for the public today. This touch and claim garbage. Mm. Yes. Do you know, Jamaica, what's your preacher do? Mm -hmm. Your preacher come tell you, well, if you really want it from God, touch it and claim it. <laughs> the scriptures ain't never taught, taught you to touch and claim nothing. Nothing, no. Liar. That's right. Yes. <laughs> touch and claim it. The scripture just says, he that believeth, he that cometh to God must, must believe, believe that he is. is. A rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. I can have faith and believe God for something. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to claim what's not mine. No. Scripture, they never tell me to touch and claim anything. That's right. I may drive up in my car. You can touch it all you want <laughs> and claim it. That's right. As long as I got the keys, I'm driving away with it. Yes. That's right. 
And I will leave you standing in touching position yes. and claiming position. That's yeah. right. That touching claim is a bundle of trash from hell. What just is to it? deceive the ignorant. Amen. Listen that, Brother Paul. What is it then? What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. With the Spirit. And I will pray with the understanding. You also. got to have some understanding. That's right. If you have understanding, you won't go around repeating what everybody else said. Amen. And this is what is happening in the churches. You don't, many don't have understanding. So therefore, the moment the preacher say, church, stand up, church, mm -hmm. and claim your healing right now. Mm -hmm. Claim it. All right, just a minute. Mm -hmm. Preacher, I tell you, <coughs> here you got a bad back and your back is hurting. Mm -hmm. Preacher, come tell you, you don't have to claim that bad back. Oh, that part is true. You, ain't, you don't have to claim it because your bad back is going to claim you. Amen. You don't have to claim it. It's going to claim you. That's right. The preacher said, well, don't claim it. You are healed already. You are healed already. Amen. Listen, if you are healed, whenever God healed anybody, Amen. you no longer have that problem anymore. That's, that's right. right. That's it. That's, that's the truth it. of it. That's, that's right. It. You can claim the healing all you want. If you still got that problem, you are not healed. So stop lying to yourself. Yes. Amen. That's true. I injured my back maybe about 16, 17 years ago. I ain't claiming nothing. No. I'm not healed. No, no. See, the problem with people, there's sometimes they're not healed. They just feel better that day. Yes. That's right. And because they feel better, they say, well, you know, I'm healed. The next thing you know, the weather changed. <laughs> <laughs> and then that pain remind you, here I am. Yeah. Amen. It's like some days my back is fine. That's right. One day I picked my son up when he was a baby and my back went and my legs went and I hit the floor. Mm -hmm. Well, I wasn't healed. Mm -hmm. I'm not healed now. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, some days I feel better, but I'm not healed. Right. I'm still waiting on it. That's right. Someone said, well, that means you ain't have faith. Well, it don't mean that at all. That's God right. will heal me when he chooses to. That's yes. right. And if he don't do it, I still know he's able. I'm That's not right. going to claim it. That's, That's right. right. That's true. I'm not going to claim nothing. That's Amen. true, sir. That's just the truth of it. That's true. Amen. It's like a lot of uh, people, preachers lay hands on them and pray for them, and the preacher tell you he's a healer. Hmm. He's a liar. That's no. a liar. It's not a man living is a healer. That's no. right. The only healer is God. That's right. A person can lay hands on you, pray for you, yell up. Listen, churchgoers, let me explain something to you. Mm -hmm. This is not necessary. Mm -hmm. You go into some church, and the preacher lay hands on you, mm -hmm. yelling to you about to go death. <laughs> That's right. Oh, in the name of I said, that I'm not are you, you all right? <laughs> that's, now, right. That's, right. that's right. You may end up hurting more. Yeah. Amen. By the time that little jackrabbit is done with you. That's right. Sir. That's right. All you got to do is read the scriptures. That's right. See how the apostles did it. See how they prayed. They didn't go around slapping you, kicking you, beating you, fussing with you, arguing with you, gang banging you. No, no. No. No, no. Mm. Me yelling in your head is not going to make the devil come out any quicker. No, it won't. Me yelling in your head is not going to heal you any faster. Mm -hmm. So I can pray for you. Mm -hmm. But if God don't heal you, don't get upset with me. That's right. That's true. I have prayed for many people. God have healed them of cancer. God have healed them of all type of internal bleeding. Mm -hmm. God have even opened the deaf ear. Amen. We prayed for people. I have been sick and prayed for people and asked God to heal me. He went right by me and healed the person I was praying for. Amen. <laughs> Left me standing there sick while I'm praying for somebody else. That's right. Heal them. Just leave me sick and heals me later. Amen. So uh, that touching claim is nothing but a myth. So when you want to learn how to pray, mm -hmm. don't worry about trying to repeat what somebody else say. No. Because who's, say they, who's to say they are correct? and the words they use. That's right. And then what makes it so bad to teach the preachers are a contributing factor to the ignorance oh that is in people. That's right. All right, next question. Uh, this is from Julianne. She said, I am not condemning anything in your church manual. What is that now? I am not condemning anything in your church manual. All right. But most, if not all, of your rules, I notice that it is carried out by the Masonic Lodge you're, also. You're wrong. The Masonic Order and us 
Do I have nothing in common? Nothing in common. Talk about it, sir. Did you hear what I said, Jamaica? That's, That's right. right, sir. Glory to God. I said the Masonic order and holiness. Yes. Don't have nothing in common. No, they don't. You ain't got to be initiated in here to obey God. No. No, no. To be a Mason, you got to be initiated. That's mm -hmm. right. And you do it secretly. Secretly. Jesus said in secret, have I said nothing? nothing. That's right. We speak openly and boldly in the synagogue. That's yes, right. Yes, sir. Now, this is how you become a Mason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're blindfolded. Mm -hmm. Your shirt is torn over your heart. You have one pants leg rolled up. Mm -hmm. This is the secrecy mm -hmm. of the Masonic order. And then when you're blindfolded, you know, you're told you got to bring food to feed a goat. Hmm. Then a bunch of men run around you, you know, hitting you with things, making noise hmm. to scare you. Amen. They got this teaching about the lion's claw, the lion's grip to pull you from the dead. Hmm. We're not interested in none of that garbage. No, no. The Masonic order don't believe in repentance and baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. The Masonic order is nothing, don't have no interest about the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. No interest. The Masonic order don't believe it's one God. Mm -hmm. That's why so many religions is in it. And the Masonic order, well, you believe in your God, you believe in your God, you believe in your God. Oh God. The Masonic order, the ring is classified as the light. Right. In holiness, God is classified as the light. That's, That's right. right. I wouldn't want a light that can just get on my finger. No. I want a light that no. can illuminate my entire body. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God. Are you listening? That's Amen. Right, That's what I want. That's, That's right. right. I want a light that can illuminate my mind and give me wisdom and yes. knowledge Hallelujah. and divine understanding. That's That's right. Hallelujah. Break Glory down. To Hallelujah. That's the right, wisdom sir. of God and the knowledge of yes. God That's and right. the understanding of the righteous. That's, That's right. right. I don't need no little cheap ring on my Spring. finger talking no. about some light. Amen. No, I take the Masonic no, order and make you lick up that secrecy. Yes, That's right. I'd make you lick it up. That's, That's right. right. From no, the head no. to the tail, I'd make tail. you lick it up. That's, That's right. right. So no, holiness and the Masonic order don't have nothing in common. No, no, the Masonic no. order is not a fighter. No. God made me a preacher. That's I'm a right. fighter. Hallelujah. Pastor Paul said I fought a good fight. Good fight. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. I believe in fighting. That's right. I believe in fighting anything and everything that's not like God. And this is why preaching just often say, that Pastor Jennings ain't got love. Well, <laughs> it isn't that I don't have love. I think I'm a pretty loving fella. <laughs> Amen. The problem is you are a religious spoiled brat. That's I it. See. You have been going to church so long, eating nothing but sugar so long, That's and right. you've just been jumping and shouting every chance you get. That's and right. then when the word of God comes, that sound yes, sir. firm, That's uncompromising, right. yeah, where you can't do what you want to do, yeah. now you can't take it. That's right. That's right. Sir. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. You show me a preacher. Amen. Any preacher that's not a fighter, fighter. That's right. that preacher is of the devil. That's right. It's a good fight. Every man that's of God in the book was Glory and is that's a right. fighter. It's yeah. like a good fight of faith. So when you folks write me and tell me I'm a fighter, yes. I acknowledge it. Yes. Right. yes, yes you are. I love Hallelujah. to fight. That's, that's right. right. That's right. Yes, I do it gladly. That's fight right. the good fight. I fight anybody. That's right. right. It isn't a preacher in Jamaica. I won't fight. Amen. Amen. I fight any preacher in Jamaica, yes, black, sir. white, yellow, brown, red, yes, of any brother. denomination, any religion under the sun. That's, That's right. right. Not only will I fight you, that. I'll beat you. Beat That's right. Are you listening? That's, That's right. right. Not only will I fight you, That's right, sir. I'll beat you. That's right. Someone say, what makes you so confident? Amen. The Almighty do. That's, That's right. That's right. Oh, so, yeah. So, yes, I am a fighter. Oh, fight yes, the good fight of faith. And you want to know something? I wouldn't want to follow a man. Mm-hmm. Who's scared to fight religion? That's Amen. right. No, if a man gonna lead me, he better be a warrior. That's right. Because if you look at the prophets and the apostles, right. they were warriors. That's oh, yeah. right. Yes, they wasn't scared. Oh, yeah. No, they were. Right. If they had to face a king, they stood before the Stand king. Up. That's right. Stand if up. they had to face a queen, they stood before the queen. Yeah, That's, right. That's true. Why is it that your preacher is scared today? Be not afraid of their faces. Do you hear this? In Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 8. God tell his prophet. Be not afraid of their faces. Why? For I am with thee, with thee. to deliver thee, saith the Lord. That's what make me so relentless. That's Glory right. Why is the preachers today afraid? Because mm -hmm. you spoiled them with money. Spoiled. Mm. That's right. My God. You bought them off like a pimp buy off a hoe. That's mm. right. 
You bought your preacher off. That's, That's why right. he's scared. That's right. He don't even preach hell in the church. No, nope, he no just tell you, my friends. <laughs> That's right. My friends, if if you don't do better, you won't make it. You won't make it. I'm afraid you go. You won't make it, friend. <laughs> That's right. Just tell them they'll go to hell. That's Amen. right. <laughs> That's all. Amen. That's right. Man up. Man, that's Man right. up. Man up. That's right. You don't obey God, you'll go to hell. That's it right. ain't no purgatory. Amen. You lying Catholics, it ain't no purgatory. That's right. You're either with God or you go to hell with the devil. That's it. It ain't no purgatory. Not too good for heaven, not too bad for hell. So you rest between the clouds and have an eternal vacation. <laughs> Amen. Sit on a cloud and bring spiritual pina colada. Oh, Not right. that. No, no. You don't obey God. Mm -hmm. I don't care how poor you are, Amen. how rich you are, mm -hmm. how known you are. Mm -hmm. If you don't obey God, he that believeth not, God say he that believeth not shall be damned. Shall go to purgatory. Shall be damned. Go to purgatory. Shall be damned. Go to purgatory. Shall be damned. You know what damned is? Amen. That means you are go to hell. That's it. That's the message we have to offer you. That's right. Either obey God. Mm -hmm. Or go to hell. That's right. true. That's right. You can't afford to be on the payroll preaching this stuff. No. <laughs> no way. All right, come on, Gary. Let's have it. From Julian again. Yeah. This is on the Holy Ghost. What's that? This is on the Holy Spirit. All right. It says, how is it that I cannot receive the Holy Spirit, and yet I have believed, but baptized also in the name of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Also, I have tarried for it, and I am living a clean life to the best of my knowledge. All right. And also to the word of yes. God. Well, I have to advise you the way Jesus did. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't put a time limit on it. No. Eh? Listen at this. Luke chapter 24 and verse 49. What is it? And behold, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But do what? But tarry ye. Tarry ye. In the city of Jerusalem. Until you be endued with power from on high. So my advice to you, uh, writer, <coughs> Jesus just simply means tarry. He said tarry. Mm -hmm. It simply means to wait. That's right. Now, a lot of preachers tell their members, if you've been waiting for 10 years, you should have been to have the Holy Ghost. There's not a preacher in the world got the right to tell a person when they should have the Holy Ghost. No. Because the Holy Ghost is a gift. That's right. And if it's a gift, it comes from God. That's it. And the preacher do not have the right to tell you, well, you've been waiting five years, you should have been had it. It's not like I can go get it. No. no. I have to wait and seek the Lord until he decides to give it to me. That's yeah. right. So I got to do like Jesus said, tarry yeah. until. until. Stay there. That's until. it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's until. right. Wait. That's right. 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 Wait, How long? Wait. Just keep waiting. Until. That's right. Hallelujah. Until. until the windows of heavens open up. Until. That's right. Just wait, stay until. there and keep waiting. That's wait, right. Until. So don't ever let no preacher tell you you've been tagging this. Don't fact don't let nobody tell you nobody. that. That's you've been right. tagging five years, ten years, fifteen years. You should have been had it. You can't tell me what I should have been had. No, I'm no. gonna keep obeying God and just keep tagging. That's mm -hmm. right. Keep waiting. That's, That's right. Keep That's fighting in the midst of my waiting. Oh yeah. Until I receive this power that God promised me from on high. That's right. All right, come on, Gary, let's have it. E. David yeah. says, Greetings, Pastor Jennings. Greetings. Love your teaching. What are your teaching on tithes? May good Lord continue to bless you, sir. What is my teaching on tithes? Well, tithes. I don't have no teaching on tithes, but I'll tell you what the book says. What the book says. Give me the book of Malachi, then we'll get the book of Hebrews, if you will. Amen. All right. Mm -hmm. Tithing and offering. Mm -hmm. Tithing, Abraham gave a tenth of all oh, his spoils. All his spoils. Meaning a tenth of his gross. That's right. And also, uh, you see what people fail to realize, they think tithing is just money. Right. Tithing is not just money. Amen. Tithing is, is not only money, it's land. Land. Tide of the land. Tide of the land. Listen at this. In Leviticus chapter 27 and at verse 30. All right. And all the tithe of the land. All the, because remember, everything you ever get is only God that give it to you. That's yeah. right. I don't care how rich you are, all the money you make, if God didn't give you strength, you couldn't make no money. Amen. No. So why you folk that do got money get so overwhelmed with it like you so prominent and so important? That's right. You drive a Bentley? Fine. I love Bentleys. <laughs> I don't have one, but I like them. But only a Bentley can do is get you from point A to point B. That's mm -hmm. right. You drive a Rolls Royce? Fine. Mm -hmm. After you come out of that Bentley, you come out of that Ferrari, come out of that Porsche, come out of that car, mm -hmm. you still got to repent. That's it. Still got to be baptized mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus Christ. Still must seek the Holy Ghost. You see, the way holiness is set up by God, the rich man got to do the same thing the poor man oh, got to yeah. do. That's oh, right. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. That way, no one can think they're better than the other. That's, That's right. right. Huh? That's right. The right. rich man got to come do the same thing the poor man has to do. Amen. Listen at this. And all the tithes of the land. All the tithes of the land. Whether of the seed of the land. Whether the seed of the land. Or of the fruit of the tree. Or the fruit of the tree. Is the Lord's. Is whose? Is the Lord's. Why you think Ananias and Sapphire, God killed the husband and wife? That's right. Because they conspired to rob God. That's right. They had land, they sold it. Mm -hmm. And the book says they kept back part of the price, the price, meaning they kept back part of the money. That's right. Peter told them, wasn't it thine own? Mm -hmm. You didn't have to lie. Wasn't it yours? That's right. It was your money. You didn't have to lie about it. That's right. And this is where people are in the book of Malachi, I believe. Chapter 3. Listen at Malachi chapter 3. And at verse 8. Listen. Will a man rob God? What is the question? Will a man rob God? What is the question? Will a man rob God? Will a man rob God, folk? Yes. Talk to me, Jamaica. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Talk to me, Kingston. Yes. Amen. Will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? Yes. Yet ye have robbed the me. The Lord say, yes, ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? And the people say, well, Lord, how did we rob you? In, what did the Lord say? In tithes, in tithes and offerings. You making all this money, you won't give God a tenth mm -hmm. of what you took in. Right. You won't give God an offering. An offering is not a designated amount. An offering is something free will. That's right. If you give God a million dollars, that ain't enough. That's right. Because he gave you life. Amen. Yeah. And life is more precious than money. That's Amen. right. Amen. Huh? Amen. Oh, yeah. Some folk got thousands and millions of dollars, <laughs> and it hurt them to give a dollar. Amen. Mm. They, mm. I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. When you die, what you going to take with you? What you going to take? That's right. What are you going to take with you when you die? Amen. Listen at this. Will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? Yet ye say, yet ye, ye have say, robbed me. Ye have robbed me. But ye say, ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? How did we pull that off, Lord? In tithes. In tithes. And offerings. And as a result of that conduct, ye are cursed with a curse. God a curse you because you've been robbing them for years. For ye have robbed me. Do you hear that? That's right. Give me that book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 7 and at verse 5. <coughs> Listen at this. And verily they that are the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, Did what? have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law. You see, the sons of Levi were the Levitical priesthood. Mm -hmm. I had a man tell me, well, the priesthood discontinued. The priesthood have not discontinued. No. A priest is a preacher, a minister. That's right. The one whose job is to maintain the temple. That's you it. You see, back then they had to maintain the natural temple. That's right. Now the preacher got to maintain the spiritual temple. Mm -hmm. What is the spiritual temple? Your Beautiful body is the body. temple of the living God. That's right. It is the job of the priest to maintain your temple, teach your body, teach your mind, teach your heart, teach you how to live, teach you how to walk, teach you how to obey God. That's right. He's still on his, Levit his Levitical, Levitical job. That's right. You understand? Mm -hmm. Come on now. Who receive the office of the priesthood? Yeah. Have a commandment to take tithes of the people. As what? According to the law. Now, the preacher got to use good judgment. If he's going to take all the tithes of the people, what about poor people in the church? What are they going to have if they're in need? That's right. People don't have no food. Mm -hmm. Buy them some food. Yeah. Amen. People don't have no clothing. Put some clothing on them. That's, That's right. right. That's true. People don't have no lights. Turn their lights on. That's mm -hmm. right. Are you listening? That's, That's right. It. And that way you preachers to stop taking all the money for your greedy self. Amen. That's true. Amen. Teach it. Are you listening to the old man? That's yeah. right. You know, one thing I say about you people, you will complain about how these preachers are thieves. Mm -hmm. And yet you go to them every week. Every mm. week. Does that make sense? Um, no. You complain about these preachers, how you know they're thieves and robbers and they're not preaching nothing. Mm -hmm. Yet every week you're sitting right there boosting him on. That's right. Telling him, go ahead, go ahead, Mom, go ahead. That's right. Don't complain about a thief if you won't do nothing about it. No. Mm -hmm. Now, viewers, and you that are here, as I've said moreover, I'm not one who drinks, Amen. so I don't hang with drunks. I'm not one that smoke, so I won't give you a light to light up your cigarette. That's right. I don't look down on people that have these type of habits. We believe in preaching to them and teaching them, and by the help of God, God will deliver them from these things. Yes. That's right. Certainly. Mm -hmm. But anytime you have men who's not standing for 100% pure premium scripture, 
Amen. Don't you put a diamond at an offering plate. All right. That's Don't right. you give a tithing. That's right. Don't you support that church at all. That is so. that's If right. any time you support a church that's not standing for the truth, mm -hmm. you are just as wicked as the preacher himself. All that's right. right. Because you're strengthening the hands of evil doors. That's all right. right. That's right. Thank God. That's right. You that are watching me on television, stop sending your money to Benny Hinn. Yes, Amen. Sir. Amen. <laughs> Some liar who just blow right. on you. <laughs> That's right. You ain't caught on to the trick yet. Amen. Listen. <coughs> this floor is concrete. Mm -hmm. You fall on that floor, you're going to get hurt, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, if you watch Benny Hinn and these other international evangelistic devils who you are impressed with because they're from America. Mm -hmm. Because they're from America, what does that prove? Amen. There's more devils in America than it is here in Jamaica. That's <laughs> right. And what made it so bad, the preachers in Jamaica and around the world are starting to adapt the same thing they see the American preachers do. Mm -hmm. Just uh, go to your church. You'll see the same thing. You'll find people standing behind somebody mm. and a preacher come <coughs> push him. Now you alright? <laughs> now think of it. They fall back because they know someone's gonna catch them. Yeah. Amen. All right, don't let nobody be back there but a nice, solid, concrete floor. See how many going to go down. All right. That lets you know they ain't that stupid. That's, That's right. right. That's right. They're not going down. No. That's if right. they make an attempt to go back, they may look back. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, it ain't nobody there. They're coming right back up. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's true. You That's viewers. Right. That send ten thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars, a million dollars, a hundred thousand. Amen. To Benny Hinn, Benny mm. Hinn, T.D. Jakes, mm -hmm. Creflo O'Nickel, Old Dollar. <laughs> That's right. Talk about it. Fred Price. Go ahead, brother. Someone said, but they means of God. Oh, Not one. Not one. Of believe them. in the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Not one. All That's right. right. They all fight against it and say you don't have to have it. All Amen. Right. Amen. A man of God don't fight scripture. No. A man of God cleave to the scriptures. That's right. That's it. That's right. Pat Robinson, 700 Club. 700 Club. These men can get on television and do a telephone. Hmm. I mean, they quote them figures so comfortably. Yes, they do. Old Patty get on television. Well, you know, television. We, 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 need, we need a good... 37 more million dollars and right. if we don't get the Lord is telling me right now viewer that the 37 million is out there hmm. and here you are writing your social security check yeah he got caviar and heaven knows what else mm. and you can't even barely make it oh, this God. is what the preachers got you thinking viewer and even you that are here mm. the more money you give the more the Lord will do something for you. Right. Don't misunderstand me. It takes money to, for anything to function. Yes. That's right. That's true. But I don't want a God that cannot do nothing for me unless I got a buck. That's right. Because what you going to do with the scripture that says the poor you have with you always. Why oh. do I don't have no money? Okay. Come ye to the war. Listen. Isaiah chapter 55 and at verse 1. Glory to God. Ho, everyone that thirsty. Everyone that thirsty. Come ye to the water. You come to the water. And he that hath no money. No, he that hath 50 grand. He that hath no money. He that live good. He that hath no money. He that can bring 10,000. He that hath no money. You see, when these preachers got members in the organization that are large donators of money. Mm. Most time, those members of the organization is not reprimanded or approved for any form of sin they commit. That's right. Hmm. Because he don't want to cut off that check. Yeah. That's right. So just say if Gary uh, was one of my brothers who was a millionaire, in which I don't have no millionaires, <laughs> but just say Gary was given every month a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And if I was a false prophet, 
Yeah. I wouldn't care if he had three wives. Mm -hmm. Right. I ain't gonna bother him. No. That's right. I'm not gonna bother him. Why? I want that monthly million. Yeah. That's that right. That monthly million. Monthly million. That monthly million. That's right. Amen. And this is what preachers do today. Mm -hmm. Because of members in the church who are big money givers. That's right. If they are wicked, if they are perverted, if they are sinners, they will let them function in the church as free as free. they want and mm. won't say nothing. Mm. And the congregation knows that they are devils. My That's God, right. My God. A man like that is a sellout. Yes, That's sir. right. People, churchgoers, you can't tolerate and keep tolerating these men that are sell you out. Which no. did sell himself. They just like King Ahab. In 1 Kings 21 and verse 25. The book says. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself. He sold himself. To work wickedness in the sight of the Lord. I'm mm. glad money don't move me. Thank God. Not at all. Thank God. I was already offered to be a millionaire. When I was in high school, making $24,000 a month, not a year, hmm. not a year, making 24 grand a month, Amen. offered 15 grand cash up front hmm. to play jazz for a millionaire club. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I, I, I know how to do it. Yeah. Yes, I know how to do it pretty well. <laughs> but here I was born of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and had the blessed Holy Ghost speaking in tongues and striving to please God. So I had to pass that up. Now my flesh didn't want to do it. No. Amen. No. No. no way. I'm in my teens and I'm offered 24000 a month. Hmm. And knowing some people don't make that in a year. That's hmm. right. But then the scripture says, what doeth profit a man to gain the whole world? Oh God. And lose oh, your soul. soul. See, Hallelujah. when you, when your priorities are right. Money don't phase you. That's right. Money don't phase me. That's right. I had a discussion years, some years ago with the Nation of Islam. And we had an auditorium with close to over 2,000 people. Mm -hmm. And a man offered me, in fact, he had a check and gave me $100,000. Mm. Yes. But then was offering a bunch of foolish teaching and a bunch of foolish doctrine. I gave him the check back in front of everybody. I gave it to him back. Mm -hmm. That's right. I told him, here, take that back. You can't buy me. I'm not a hoe. That's, That's right. right. That's, That's right. right. Huh? That's Money right. don't phase me. That's right. If you offer me a million dollars today just to change, just to change, hmm. just to change. Mm -hmm. and this is why preachers are so weak, they are bought off. That's right. They are bought off off money don't phase me if you gave me 10 grand thank you that's right you gave me a hundred thousand thank you Still thank you but if you offer me money to change hmm. keep it mm -hmm. i'm not a hoe you can't buy me i won't sell out i'll go to the electric chair before i sell out all that's right. right glory hallelujah that's right if, too many men done sold out already amen yeah. listen if in numbers 24 and verse 13 listen at this if balak would give me his house <laughs> full of silver and gold this is my good brother prophet balaam balaam that's right and balak offered balaam position Mm -hmm. Meaning power and money. That's right. Trying to get Balaam to change. Mm -hmm. That's right. Balaam responded to Balak. If Balak would if give Balak me his house, would give me his house full of silver, full of silver and gold and gold. I cannot I go beyond cannot the commandment go of the Lord. Go beyond God's commandment to do either good to do either good or bad or bad of my own mind. I feel the same way. But what the Lord says. But what the Lord say? That yes. will I speak. You can never give me enough money to make me change. That's, That's right. right. Not at all. That's right. Not at all. It's not enough money in the world That's that right. will impress me. I haven't met millionaires before. Mm -hmm. I'm not impressed. Amen. Why? I know you got to eat. I know you got to sleep. <laughs> you got to use the bathroom like I do. I don't care if you got a mansion with 35 rooms and 40 gold toilets. <laughs> My Lord. Now, if you can sit in those toilets at the same time, all 40 of them. My Lord. That's right. I look up to you. Look up to you. I want to know how do you do it. Oh. <laughs> My God, but you're born of a woman like I am. And you're going to die one day like I will. That's yes, right. Sir. All right, come on. Uh, uh, let's go back to the book of Hebrews to finish it up real quick. Back in Hebrews chapter 7 at verse 5. So tithing is a tenth of your gross. Mm -hmm. Tithing is a tenth of all what you have. So you right. give to God. That's right. Offering is something that's free will. That's and right. as I often say, you can never give God enough. That's what that's how this telecast keep going. Mm -hmm. 
tithing and offering. That's how this telecast keep going and keep pumping. We don't believe in breaking the law to get one dime. That's no. true. No, sir. Just for the salvation of people's souls. That's yeah. right. No, not at all. That's this right. is how the telecast is pumping. We, we, we don't sell tickets at the door. No. When I travel in different parts of the world, you would never have no one selling tickets for you to come see us. No. Amen. Like I often say, death is free here. Yes. yes. We <laughs> offer free death. Yes. That's right. Free death. We offer you free death. That's right. If a man is of God, why you got to pay to come see him? That's what right. is my reward then? Why do you got to pay to come see some preacher? Amen. That's right. You shouldn't have to pay this. You ain't had to pay to come see Jesus. No. No, it isn't. And these men come along today, they ain't better than Jesus. No. So what make them so important? What make them so prominent? What make them so pure? That's right. That they got to put out money just to see you. You ain't that good. That's, That's right. right. I can go to God free of charge. Yes. Amen. Amen. You will never have to pay to come see Pastor Jenny. That's right. If you ever see anybody out there <laughs> selling tickets or collecting money and say, if you want to see Pastor Jenny, they call something, arrest them. Yes. Call the cops. That's, that's right. right. Have them arrested. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's nothing but hypocrisy. That's true, yes, it is. Lord Listen. God. First Corinthians 9, 18. What is my reward then? What is then? my reward then? Verily that when I preach the gospel. That what? I may make the gospel of Christ without charge. I can't charge you. No. no charge you to come see me, please. Oh, no way. man. No. My God, this information God gave me is priceless. Yes. That's right. You can't put no price on it. That's no. right. Someone said, but well, I want to give you something. The greatest thing you can give is your life. That's Amen. It. Out of all the money you ever will give in life, the greatest offering is you. That's right. The Apostle Paul taught us, mm -hmm. present your body a living, living sacrifice. sacrifice. Holy and acceptable one to God, which is your reasonable service. So some, so sometimes, brothers and sisters, I get letters from so many parts of the world, and people tell me, you know, Pastor Jennings, I wish I had money. I'd put you on international television, on TBN and BET. And I often tell the people, if you don't have money when you want to give, don't worry about it. Don't get upset about it. The greatest offering is you. Yes. That's right. As long as you are living, you still is able to give. That's That's right. Right. Because once you give God your total self, yes. mind, soul, body, spirit, that will always be the greatest offering you can ever present to the Most High. That's right. That's, right. That's it. Listen. Hebrews 7 and verse 5, have a commandment to take tithes of the people yeah. according to the law. All right, come on, Gary. Let's get the next question. Everybody all right? Oh, yes. Come on. This is from Mr. Collins. He said, good afternoon, Pastor. Yes. I must say that I really like your program. It's just the biblical truth. Is it right for a woman to be pastors, for women to be pastors and to preach? No. No. No, it is not right for a woman to be a pastor. Amen. No, it is not right for a woman to preach. To preach. Give me Isaiah chapter 3, and we're going to have verse 12, Isaiah 9, 16, and 17, Ecclesiastes 7, 28, mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 33 through 35, and then Go 1 ahead. Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. Go ahead. That's right. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 3 and Go verse ahead. 12. God. Go ahead, sir. Let's take our time. Let's take our time and backtrack. Yes. Right. yes. Take our time and backtrack. That's right. I just want to give you some good rapid fire to hit oh, you. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Because that's a big problem here in Jamaica. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I turned the television on this morning, and there was some woman just yelling and hollering that she was hurting my ears. Yeah. Amen. Listen. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 12. Before you read that, the apostle Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 3, Verse 4, rather. Mm -hmm. He teaches the woman to have a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God a great price. Godly women who are properly taught, you won't find them out in the street loud and boisterous like men. Mm -hmm. They conduct themselves as a young lady. Yes. See, you can be a young woman, but that doesn't mean you're a young lady. That's right. There's a big difference. That's right. A person become a young woman simply by age or maturity. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but some never become a young lady. Amen. At all. At all. Ever. Never, ever. <laughs> ever, never, ever. Never, That's ever. Right. Never, ever. That's they right. become a young woman, but never, ever, never, ever, ever, never <laughs> <laughs> become a young lady. That's true. Right. And that's not good, man. You know? So it, it's just like even when saints greet one another in the street. The book of scripture teaches us, let all things be done decently and in order. I mean, you see one another in the streets. Sisters should not be yelling like men. Praise the Lord! How you doing? Now hold it. That's right. The scripture says, have a meek and quiet, and quiet, spirit. quiet spirit. That's what the scripture teaches. That's, That's right. 
when this woman get up and testify in the church, she's not up like a man. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. No. Say praise the Lord. Right. Say get up. That's say right. get down. <laughs> Wave your hands in the air. Wave them like you just don't care. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, wait. That's right. I don't blame the woman. I blame her pastor. Yes. Because he should be teaching her. That's yes. right. She's an quiet. innocent victim. She don't know no better. That's Make right. quiet. Meek and quiet. Right. Someone said, well, the book says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. But who was he talking to? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The book says, lift up your voice at the trumpet. He wasn't talking to the woman. Oh, to the woman. He's talking to the preacher. That's right. He said, lift up your voice at the trumpet and show my people yeah, their transgression in the house of Jacob their sin. That's the preacher's job. That's right. To show the people their transgression. That's right. This is what God tells the woman in 1 Peter chapter, chapter 3, 3 and, at verse 4. and verse 4. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. Let it be the hidden man of the heart. And that which is not corruptible. And that which is not corruptible. Even the ornament. Look how precious God look at it. He calls it an ornament. Of a meek. Of a meek. And quiet spirit. And quiet spirit. Which is in the sight which of God. Which is in the sight. Never mind the sight of Pastor Genesis. Forget me. In mm -hmm. the sight of God. In the sight of God. Of great right. price. God value that. That's right. Meek and quiet spirit. That's right. You know, some folk been doing that for years. It's a habit. They got to eventually get out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, you better give me uh, Ecclesiastes okay. 7.28. Let's see Brother Solomon, the son of David. Uh, Solomon put a search on. That's right. In a see, seeing can he find a woman to put her in this authoritative position. That's right. All right. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 28. Yeah. Which yet my soul seeketh. So do I. But I find not. Neither do I. One man among a thousand have I found. I was able to find one man. But a woman. But a woman. Among all those. Among all those. Have I not found. How did you find one? Jamaica? That's right. All these women preachers around here in Kingston and St. Elizabeth and St. Catherine and Montego Bay and other parts of Jamaica that I don't even know by name. <laughs> Amen. Women preachers and the men sitting there all scared and timid. Scared Women just yelling and hollering and men sitting there. <laughs> That's right. He tell them, all right, man. <laughs> That's right. Come up here and collect the offering, man. <laughs> we going to ask the church to please stand and <laughs> right. come bring, bring your money, please. God bless you. That's man, right. you little spineless thing, you. Mm. Amen. Mm. And here's a man supposed to be the head of his house. Amen. But when it comes to church, you slide down from the head, you become a tail. Yeah. That's right. I often say a woman that's a real woman, she want a real man. Oh, yeah. that's, right. that's the truth of it. If she get married, she want to marry a real man, a man that'll protect her. Amen. Not a man that'll hear noise in the house and he run out and leave her in there. That's right. That's right. Give me the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 3 and at verse 12. Listen. As for my people. God's talking as for my people. Children are their oppressed. Children are their oppressed. And women. What? Women. What are the women doing? Rule over them. How did the prophet feel about women trying to rule God's people? Oh, my people. Jamaica. What did the prophet say? Oh, my people. Jamaica. What did the prophet say? Oh, my people. Come on, Jamaica. What did the prophet say? Oh, my people. Don't be scared. Kick it out, Jamaica. What did he say? Oh, my people. Now, when you go back to your church and see that woman get up, you say the same thing. Oh, my people. The moment she get up and try to preach, oh, on, the, on your way out, just start yelling. Oh, my people. Oh, my people. That's right. Oh, yes. Oh, my, my people. people. That's, that's right. right. That's it. If you got the same spirit that's in the prophets, that's it's it. supposed to be in you. That's how it. is it you condone what God is against? That's, that's right. Listen. Oh, my people. Let's talk about the woman. Oh, my people, they, what? They which, they which lead which thee. Lead thee. Cause thee to err. No, she leads you into the kingdom of God. Cause thee to err. No, she leads you mm. into the kingdom of God. Cause thee to err. She leads you into heaven. Cause thee to err. And destroy mm. the way of thy paths. It is not given to a woman to preach no, no. and to lead the people of God no. right. into the kingdom of God. That's no, right. Sorry. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16 and 17. Isaiah 9, verse 16 and 17. Listen. For the leaders of this people. Look at this. The leaders of this people cause, cause them to err. Them to err. And they that are led error. them err. Women bishops. Mm -hmm. That's right. Hmm. Women apostles. Oh, That's Jesus. right. 
Deaconess. Deaconess. Go ahead. Go ahead. Deaconess is mm -hmm. a mess. Mm -hmm. That's right. Women elders. Oh yes. That's right. This is all in the book. That's Man, right. you folk keep going to these churches and you see it's wrong. See it's wrong. Mm. Hmm. If there's any women here, that's a little evangelist. You take your little artificial license and tear that garbage up. That's All right. right. All right. Any women here step in the pulpit after you hear this message, you're hard head, disobedient, and don't you lie to my son. I know what God told me. Right. God told me God ain't never tell nobody nothing that contradict the book. That's, that's it. Right. That's never. It. Never. That's it. That's never. Right. Amen. Good teaching. I don't care what bishop ordained you. A false prophet ordains women. Yes. That's right. Are you getting me, Jamaica? Talk to me. You that are here in Jamaica, Talk all to women me. that have been ordained by some man. Yes. Only a homegrown devil made false prophet. Yes. That's right. Ordains women. That's yes. Right. Spit it out. That's right. Yes, sir. I want to take your credentials mm -hmm. Amen. and tear them up. That's, That's right. right. This is good, isn't it? It is. Oh, yes. Now, if you're upset, I want you to know in advance that I'm not sorry. <laughs> if you're waiting for an apology from me, it'll never come. That's right, sir. Glory to God, because I believe what's written. That's right. You that go to the churches where the women preach, leave them. Leave them. Leave them. Amen. Well, my mother's a woman preacher. Your mother's a noise maker. Right. Your mama. Yes. I said your mama. That's right. That's right. Your mama claims she's a preacher. She's not but a noise maker. Amen. Yes, sir. Well, Pastor Jenny, don't you say that? My wife is a preacher. You're sleeping with a liar. That's, That's right. right. Yes, yes I'm sir. talking about your wife. That's what right. What are you gonna do about it? That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right, sir. Your wife is a woman preacher. Yes, are sir. you gonna defend her honor? Yes. With what? With what? If your wife is a woman preacher, she's been deceived. Yes. That's right. Because the book says if the woman wants to know anything, yeah, ask her husband, her husband at, home. At, home. at home. The book did not say for the man to ask his wife. That's yes. right. That's right. That's true. That's right. Are you listening? That's Go right. Ahead. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? That's right. You? That's right. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's right, sir. Everybody all right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Come on, Williams. Let's have it. For the leaders of this people cause them to err. Yes. And they that are led of them are destroyed. What else? Therefore, the Lord shall have no joy oh, in their God. young men. Young men sitting in the woman preachers, jumping up. Preach, mother. Go ahead, mother. Mm. And you was a young man? Young man. What's the matter with you? Amen. You was a young man. That's right. Hmm. Jump up, preach, mother. Go ahead. Go ahead, mother. Oh, praise God. Sit down, young fella. God don't get no joy out of you. No. The book plainly states. The Lord shall have, the Lord no, shall joy have no joy. In their young no, he, he, he get a little joy. No joy. Just a little bit. No joy. God get a little bit joy. No joy. Come on, Williams. Cut them some slack. Just a little joy. The Lord shall have no joy. Just that much. No joy. That much? No joy. A little bit. No joy. That's putting the mighty tight. Come on, William. You got to lighten up, man. N O. No joy. <laughs> no. Do you hear this? Therefore, the Lord shall have no joy in their young men. I thank God for the truth of God telling us. Because you know what it is? It's an eye opener. Oh, yes. Yes, it's an eye opener. It makes people look at church different. That's right. You can't even sit in the church you go to and look at it the same. No. Because all them scriptures going to start running through your mind and you're going to be like, oh my God, this is not supposed to be going on. Mm. Right. This is not supposed to be going on. This is not supposed to be going on. And then some say, well, I'm not trying to be judgmental, but you got to judge everything around you. Yeah, that's true. Because you got one soul. That's right. And if you lose your soul after you hear the message of truth, you cannot blame nobody but yourself. Amen. You got to stop that going to church because your friends go there. That's, That's right. You got to stop that going to church because your family grew, you grew up there. Amen. You got to stop that going to church because you don't want to hurt loved ones. Right. I'd rather hurt everybody in the world yes. and escape hell. Yes, sir. Amen. Please, God, sir. Amen. Because my friend go to church, there ain't no reason for me. No. no if my wife went to a first church, mm. I ain't going to hell with her. That's mm. right. But some of you men so weak. Your wife is an old Methodist. Mm. Mm. And here's God says, be holy. 
Yes. That's right. And she tell you, well, man, you can go to that holy church if you want, man. Hmm. You go to that holy church, you don't come back to me. Hmm. Hmm. And he's like, well, wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. We ain't got to go that far. Hmm. <laughs> we ain't got to go that far. <laughs> he's scared that bed going to get cold. Yes. Oh, yes. Anytime anybody got a mind to walk with God, you got to pay a price. That's right. The thing is, you don't know what kind of price you're going to pay. Amen. When you got a mind to walk with God, you may lose, friends. Don't be surprised who turn on you. Yes. Take it from me. Oh, yes. I've had many people turn on me. That's right. And, and they wondering why the thing just keep growing. People turning on me. Don't phase me a bit. Amen. When you got God in back of you, you don't worry about people. Don't worry That's about right. that. I don't worry about people, all the death threats and people saying that, you know, Pastor Jennings, he, you know, he may be great now and all this stuff, but he's soon to come to an end. No, <laughs> only way I come to an end is when I depart from God, and I ain't doing that. That's, That's right. right. Glory to God. Right? God, I don't believe I'm going to go down unless God go down. That's, That's right. You. Stand up, son. Otherwise, in that, I'm not trying <laughs> to stand on God's word. No. I'm determined to do that. That's, That's it. At all costs. That's right. And at all loss, I'm determined to do that. You better give me the book of Corinthians real quick, son. First Corinthians chapter 14 and verse. All right, 14. woman preachers here in Jamaica. This is your hour. Get this. For well, God right. is not the author of confusion. What? God is not the author of confusion. Right, and don't forget the book of Revelation. We gotta get that. Gotta get we that. gotta get Jezebel. That's right. Because Jezebel got some daughters around. That's right. All right? That's right. Come on, son. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. What? Let your women keep silence in the churches. No, let your women have a trial sermon in the churches. Let your women keep silence in the churches. Let your women get up and be all loud and boastful in the churches. Let your women keep silence in the churches. Now you got to break down what does it mean when they talk about silence. Mm -hmm. It can't be talking about praying no. because Anna prayed. That's right. And Hannah prayed. That's yes. That's right. Yes. And the book talks about we all should pray. That's, That's it. right. It ain't talking about praying. It ain't talking about getting up testifying. Because no. the woman at the well, she testified. That's right. She bear witness of what God done for her. Mm -hmm. So it ain't talking about that. Mm -hmm. It can't be talking about singing. <laughs> because the women, they sung in the scriptures. Yes. That's right. So it got to be talking about something else. Yeah. Something else. Is it shame for a woman to do what? Listen at this. Let your women keep silence in the church. Yes. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. Is it shame for women to be speakers speak. That's it. Speak. In, the speak. in the church? In the church. A woman speaker. Speaker. Mm -hmm. Getting up trying to preach the word of Almighty God. Mm. That's it. That's speaker. It. Speaker. If a woman can preach in the church, mm -hmm. then what title can she have? That's right. That's right. That's right. If you say, well, she's a pastor, you show me one woman in the Bible where the book says she was a pastor. All right. All right. Oh, well, she's a bishop. You show me one woman in the Bible that says she was a bishop. That's right. Amen. Oh, she, she, she's an evangelist. You show me one woman in the Bible that was an evangelist. Not one. That's Not right. one. Not so one. why is this garbage going on in the churches? That's it. P-A-W. Mm -hmm. Amen. Pentecostal assemblies of the world. Amen. U-P-C. Yes. Why is that these so-called apostolic churches got women preachers? You yes. know why? why? It brings money. Mm -hmm. That's right. It brings a lot of money. That's right. That's it, sir. That's true. What did he say? Let your women keep silence in the churches. And what? For it is not permitted unto them to speak. What else? But they are commanded to be under obedience as also saith the law. What else? And if they will learn anything. Here it is. If they will learn anything. If they will learn anything, let them get up in the church and preach it. Let them ask their husbands at home. Let them get up in the church and take a text. Let them ask their husbands at home. Let them get up missionary night. Let them ask their husbands at home. No, let her get up missionary night. Let them ask their husbands at home. Let her tell the church, say, yeah. Let them ask their husbands at home. How did the apostle feel about women speakers in the church? For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Something's wrong. Amen. You mean to tell me you got the same Holy Ghost hmm. that the apostles had? Oh, Jesus. And yet you don't feel the same way about women speakers? It is a shame. Like the apostles did? Shame. It is a shame. Hold it. Hold it, viewers. 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 Your response about this subject is different from the apostle. That's right. Now, this is the way your lying, low-life preacher said. Amen. Well, God was having trouble out of the women, right. so Paul preached that to put the women in check. Yeah. Show me that scripture that says that. Yes. That's right. Liar. That's yes. right. That's right. 
Show me that scripture that says that. Yes. Yes. That's one of them homemade scriptures. That's, That's right. right. Scripture's made from scratch. Yeah. Just put it together and come up with something. Mm -hmm. That's right. The book says what? It is a shame. What? It is a shame. For women. No, Paul said, go ahead and help yourself, mother. It is a shame for women to speak in the church. No, Paul said, go ahead and help yourself. The Lord is using you. It is a shame for women to speak in the church. No, give the woman credentials. It is a shame for women to speak in the church. It was an embarrassment to the apostle. Yes. What? It was an embarrassment. So, hey, hey, viewer. Amen. Viewer, look at me now. Why aren't you ashamed? Shame. Here you got young men carrying the, the woman preacher's briefcase. That's right. <coughs> That's right. That's true. Huh? That's right. <laughs> Let me demonstrate this. I thank God for television. Yeah, you got young men. Amen. Young men. Young men. Come here, Sister Heyman. Wake up. <laughs> well, well, I use this sister. Come on, sister. You carry that. Now imagine this sister, the woman preacher. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, walk across there. Now, let me see this bag, sister. Let me see this bag. Here she is, the woman preacher. Go ahead, walk across there. And here I'm following her. Following her. Here I'm a man. <laughs> That's right. I'm following her. Now, you get a man, keep hanging around a woman like that, you know what's going to happen? Go ahead, walk back over there, sister. You know what's going to happen? This is what the man going to start doing. <laughs> That's right. Am I right, Jamaica? That's right. Yes. Talk back to me. Yes. yes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Am I right, I said? Yes. That's right. That's exactly what's going to start happening. That's yes. right. That's right. You young men get a board in your back. Board. Amen. A real man don't mind being led by a real man. That's yes. right. That's right. Are you listening to the old troublemaker? Go Amen. ahead. It is a shame. It's embarrassing. For women to speak in the church. Shame. Why you don't feel the same way? All them tongues you speaking in? Mm -hmm. That's right. You ain't got so much Holy Ghost until the Holy Ghost gonna make you contradict this. Amen. No. First Timothy chapter two, son. First Timothy chapter two and at verse 12. Come on. But I suffer not a woman to teach. <laughs> no, give her a trial sermon. I suffer not a woman to teach. Give a missionary night. I suffer not a woman to teach. Now I'm gonna balance this out. Yes. I'm going to show you where the scripture is against women teaching and then I'm going to show you the scripture where it allows for a woman to teach and I'm going to show you who she is allowed to teach and I'm going to show you what she is allowed to teach. That's right. 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 Are you listening? Amen. Right. We're going to balance the scriptures right. out. Amen. I'm going to show you in the scriptures that's against women teaching right. then I'm going to show you in the scriptures that justify a woman teaching that's but right. it got a twist to it. Yes. Right. I'm going to show you what she is allowed to teach right. and who she is allowed to teach right. and it has has nothing to do with being up here. That's right. Everybody all right? Yes. Amen. Listen. First Timothy right. 2 and verse 12. That's right. First, Tim First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12. Listen. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Nor to do what? Nor to usurp authority over the man. But how? But to be in silence. Why? For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Mm. Then what's the reason? And Adam was not deceived. But the woman? Being deceived. Fell. Was in the transgression. All right. Here it's Paul. Brother Paul says a woman should not teach nor the use of authority over the man. That's Meaning right. it's not given to a woman to try to indoctrinate the man and indoctrinate the church. That's it. Now notice the book of Titus. Titus chapter 2 and at verse 3. Here where the scriptures condone women teaching, but here's a twist to it. That's right. Listen. The aged women uh -oh. like wives. Aged women. Aged women. What do you mean? Mothers in the church. That's it. The mothers. That's right. Women of age. Mm -hmm. Women that have experience have some wisdom, some knowledge, and understanding of the Most High. That's right. Listen. The aged women likewise. What? That they be in behavior as becometh holiness. All right, young women, young mother, I mean old mother, old mother, you got to behave as becometh holy. according to the law of holiness. That's right. Come on. Not false accusers. Not false accusers. Not given to much wine. Hold it. Not false accusers. What else? Not given to much wine. I want to work on that too much wine, just too in case wine. I got anybody here nipping some Jamaican rum. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> when it says not too much wine, now you got to go to the scriptures and balance that out and see where is wine 
is justifiable in usage. That's right. Uh, Brother Paul taught Timothy. Drink no longer water. Listen at this. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 23. Yes. Drink no longer water. Drink no longer water. But use a little wine. For what reason? For thy stomach's sake. Now the scriptures allow you to use wine for the stomach's sake. If you got a stomach yes. condition yes, right. that calls for the usage of wine, the scripture allows you to use it. But notice, it didn't say drink a cup full. No. It didn't say drink uh, a quart. No. It didn't say drink a pint. That's right. What it, did it say? Use a little wine. Little. It didn't say get drunk off of it. No, a little wine. Now, it says a little wine for what reason? For thy stomach sake. Now, you got to be careful when it comes to utilizing that scripture. Mm -hmm. Because the devil may slip in. Mm -hmm. It may trick you. Next thing you know, you got a stomach condition for breakfast, a stomach condition for lunch, a stomach condition for dinner, and a stomach condition before you go to bed. Mm -hmm. right. You got a nice, about four shots of wine that day. That's and right. before you know it, you got a stomach condition every day. Yes. Amen. So good judgment got to be used. Oh, yeah. Is that right? That's right. Yes. All right, come on now. Use a little wine for thy stomach's sake. And for thine often infirmity. Go back to the book of Titus. Give chapter and verse again in Titus. Back in Titus chapter 2 and at verse 3. Listen good. Not given to much wine. Not given too much wine. Teachers. Uh-oh. All right, mothers, aged women. Mm -hmm. Teachers. Of good things. This is right after the Apostle Paul taught us. Mm -hmm. I suffer not a woman to teach nor the use of authority over the man. Yes. But now the Apostle Paul began to give the woman permission to teach good the mother good things. Good now things. it's going to show us what are the good things she is allowed to teach, and then it's going to show us who is on the receiving end yes. of this teaching. Break That's it right. Right. That's that right. they may teach the young women. No, the whole church. Teach the young women. The men and women. The young women. The whole body of Christ. Teach the young women. She ain't getting up here. No. She may have a meeting just with a bunch of young sisters. Yes. Out there in the congregation, sitting among the young sisters. And this is what the old mother's teaching them how to what? That they may teach the young women to be sober. Uh -huh. Old mother teach the young sister, listen, girl, you got to get on track. You're too unstable. Yes. Right. You know, you're too unstable. You, you start something, then you stop it. You start something, then you stop it. You need to be focused. Mm -hmm. Get some stability in you. You know, you, you, you know, you, you, you in and out of relationship, in and out of relationship, you got to get some stability. Don't get in no relationship till you get some stability about yourself. That's right. Teaching her to be what? That they te may teach the young women to be sober. Teaching her how to be sober. Sober. She got to, she, she's focused. That's right. Not so easily distracted by anything and everything. That's right. Mm -hmm. To love their husbands. Oh, if you're married, the mother teach you how to love. Their husbands. Teach you how to love your husband. Teach your responsibility to your husband. Yes. That's what the mother, this ain't got nothing to do with getting up in the pulpit. No, no. no. And if you look at what the Apostle Paul is itemizing to the aged women, to the mothers in the church, she's te teaching her how to teach the young women about everyday life. That's yes. right. That's right. Everyday life. That's right. Not doctrine, none of that. No. None of that. Not trying to break down who God is. No. No, no. Listen. That they may teach the young women to be sober. Sober. To love their husbands. And the teaching of loving your husband, you're taught how to respect your husband. How to take care of your man. That's right. Now, and the woman, the mother also have to be careful because <laughs> the young sister may be having some problems out of her husband. Mm -hmm. And you can't teach her anything that will cause her to uh, get back at in a violent detrimental way mm -hmm. to her husband. She come to you, but well, mother, you know, he's carrying me through this, he carrying me through that. You get a wicked mother, she'll say, then listen, this is what you do. This is what I did to my man. Mm. Next time you cook him some grits or some oatmeal, you just take a little rat poison and sprinkle it in there. <laughs> Before you know it, you won't have no problems out of him. No. Before you do it, make sure he got his insurance policy. Oh, God. Not that. No. No. Are you listening? No, no. Right. A good mother that learned the wisdom of God will not condone the wickedness, not even in her own children. That's right. But she will encourage her children to come out of the wickedness that they're in. Mm. That's right. The children may look at it as nagging and, you know, being nagging, but that's not the case. The case is you're getting older. And if you're getting older, you got to do better. If you're 29, you want to act like you're 15, doing the same type of stupid madness that you was doing when you was in school? Amen. No. Maturity must exceed the development of the physical body. The mind must mature. Mm -hmm. When the mind mature, then the body start acting out what the mind thinks. That's, That's right. It. So this is why sometimes children feel as though, well, the parents is too hard and all that. And many times that's not the case. Mm -hmm. 
you, when you get older, you must learn to take responsibility for your actions. That's it. So this is why I encourage young men and young women, go after God while you're young. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm a young man. I'm only 44 years old. Mm -hmm. I may look older, but I ventured after God while I was young. Amen. I repented of my sins and was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ when I was six. I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongue of the Spirit of God, give utterance when I was 11. Mm. Never backslid. I believe that one should strive to commit their ways to God. Amen. Is it hard? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. It's hard much. But can it be done? Oh, yes. Jesus says, strive to enter in. That's, That's right. right. Are you listening? That's yes, right. Sir. Listen at this, mother. That they may teach the young women to be sober. Sober, stable-minded. To love their husbands. Love your husband. To love their children. When you're taught how to love your children, the, taught, the teaching of discipline come in also. It's not like this modern stuff where you don't believe in beating the children. I don't mean take something and hit the child across the head and in the face. No. Right. Child get wrong, beat their behind. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. No, put them in the corner, talking about some time out. No. Time out for what? <laughs> beat your butt. That's, That's right. right. That's right. That's right, man. A lot of folks say, I don't believe in that. That's why the, the people today are in the condition that they're in. Yeah. No discipline, no nothing. Yes. That's, right. That's right. Listen. To love their children. Look, if you can reprimand your children when they're wrong, you can praise them when they do something good. That's Amen. it. That's it. Come on. To be discreet. Be discreet. Chase. You want to be discreet. Don't be a loud person. Always spread your business. That's right. Be a private person. Don't ever... Let anyone take it upon themselves to invite themselves in your marriage affairs. Don't ever get a bunch of people, including family members. Don't start getting a bunch of people in your marriage business, because when that happens, your marriage is going to go right down the tube. Amen. I'm a leader of many hundreds. Not one do I take it upon myself and invite myself in a personal business. I don't do that. I got to respect the privacy of others. I don't come in unless you invite me. That's, that's it. right. That's it. If you invite me, that's one less problem that's I right. got to deal with. That's right. Amen. If you invite me, I'm going to come in with all book. Yeah. Right. And if the man is wrong, he's just wrong. That's, that's right. I'm not into that male chauvinistic garbage. No. Because see, what a problem with a lot of us men, we don't like to be wrong. No. That's right. Is that right, man? Yes, yeah, sir. You might as well tell the truth about yourself. That's true. That's Sometime when a woman tell you, listen, I often tell my brothers this. If your wife can manage money better than you, let her manage it. That's right. If you work hard and make the money and yet you don't know where it go, let her manage it. <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing, let someone help you. That's what a help meet is for, yeah. to help you. It don't mean just to help you in bed. No. That's right. You need to tell me all your woman is to you is someone just for a bed? You ain't got much. Amen. Thank God. No, your work is together. That's why it is written, dwell with her with understanding. Understanding. Right. Listen. To be discreet. Be, dis be discreet. Chase. All right, woman. The mother teach the woman how to be clean. Keep yourself mentally and physically clean. That's right. Be a clean woman. Crown of your hair to the sole of your feet. Be a clean woman. That's right. That's right. You ain't got to worry about lipstick and rouge on your face and eyeline shadow and eyelash stick and all that paint on your face Amen. like you about to join the circus. Amen. Be the way God made you. That's right. What's wrong with the way God made you? You ain't got to buy no artificial hair, hair extensions and all that garbage and wigs. Get that mess out of your head. Amen. Hmm. What's wrong with the way God Almighty made you? That's right. You're going out there buying a horse's hair. <laughs> Got a horse tail on your head. Tail. Hmm. Amen. Well, my man like me like this. Well, consider this, sister. Suppose you get sick and can't wear it. Right. Then what? That's, That's it. Right. True beauty is from within. That's right. That's where true beauty lies. Mm -hmm. Listen. To be discreet. Be discreet. Chase. Clean. Keepers at home. The mother know how to teach the sister how to keep her house. Right. Not having your clothes lying hanging over your pot of food. That's right. It was many years ago I was in Illinois preaching the word of God and, and folks that know me know I'm, I'm a very particular eater so a mother she <laughs> she invited me to her house and her children was there and 
I have never in all my existence been into a home <clears throat> that was so dirty. When I say dirty, it was equivalent to walking in the street where chicken bones lie there. The chicken bones were so old, the marrow was gone out the bone. Sandwiches all on the floor. Amen. So I just happened to walk in the kitchen where she was preparing my food, and here she had her laundry hanging over the pots. Mm. I said, uh, brother, I think you should take me back to my hotel, you know. He said, well, you're tired? I said, well, you just get me back to my hotel. He said, I said, mother, you ain't got to fix me nothing to eat. She said, well, I sent it by my son. I said, that's all right. You don't have to send it. Well, of course, they sent it anyway. Want to show love. <laughs> and I just took it and flushed it out down the toilet. Mm. She said, oh, Pastor Jennings, you must be hungry. You cleaned that plate. I said, yes, I cleaned it. <laughs> it's clean. I didn't eat nothing. During my whole trip, I just lived off chicken sandwiches and a Sprite soda and a lemon meringue pie every day. You teach the woman how to keep her house, how to be clean. Don't misunderstand me. When you got children, hey, house gonna get dirty sometime. That's the truth of it. But by nature, she should strive to be clean. And also, brother, because you're a man, that don't mean you can't be clean. That's right. And the woman should not have to clean up after you. You're a grown man. It doesn't matter if she's your wife. That's right. Listen, I'm Pastor Jennings. I'm seen around the world. I don't sit and wait for my wife to wash my clothes. Mm -hmm. I say, what? Yes. I go down in that laundry room and get her clothes and mine. Wash clothes, Amen. iron clothes, That's right. iron my children's clothes. That's right. Sure. Iron my wife's clothes. That's right. Amen. Certainly I do. That's good. I don't need a woman to dress me. That's Some right. men need a woman to dress them. I don't need a woman to dress me. Right. I dress myself. I lay my own clothes out. I iron them. I press them. I dress myself. Amen. Some men say, well, if I work, at least you can do everything else. Listen, if you think that your occupation is just to work and bring money home and nothing else, you're sadly mistaken. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. It's more to being a husband than just bringing in a check. Oh, yes. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Amen. Right. Come on, brother. Keepers at home. Keep, know how to keep your house. Good. Be a good woman. Don't go spray your personal business. That's right. Listen. Obedient to their own husbands. Obey your husband. That the word of God be not blasphemed. That's where the book allowed the woman to teach, teach. and tells her what to teach mm -hmm. and tells her who, who to teach. That's, That's right. right. Book of Revelation, read quick. My time is getting away. Revelation chapter 2 and at verse 20. What is it? Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Now God Almighty got a complaint. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. You suffered that woman Jezebel. Which calleth herself a prophetess. What is she doing? To teach. Hold it now. How did God feel about her teaching? I have a few things against thee. And what was she doing that God was against? To teach. And what did she call herself? A prophetess. And how did God feel? I have a few things against thee. And what did he have against her? To teach. And what did she call herself? A prophetess. And what was she doing? To teach. And what did God feel about it? I have a few things against thee. If it was against Jezebel for teaching, why isn't it the preachers are against the women that are preaching today? Right. And this is the way God felt about it. I have a few things against it. And you claim you got the Holy Ghost and you condone it? Amen. And the Holy Ghost is saying that he got something against it? Against yes. thee. That's right. Suffer Hypocrite. Suffer That's not. right. One more question, Gary. Just one more. All right. All right. This is from Xenia. It says, people that are not baptized according to Acts 2.38, yes, is serving God wholeheartedly and manifest the same gifts of the Spirit where will their souls go? Where will the souls of these people go? And why some won't accept Acts 2.38? Do you think both sets of Christians should worship together? Continue to pray for me and my family. Thank you very much. We need help. All right, that's enough of that. First and foremost, writer, there is no such thing as both sets of Christians. No. God only has one church. One, that's right. God only have one people. one people. There is no both sets of Christians. For, for as the body is one. Do you hear this? 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 12. What? For as the body is Two. one. Two. The body is one. You better read that right now. 
Wipe your glasses off. Read that right. For as the body is one. Do you hear that, viewer? Amen. As the body is one, one not one. two sets of Christians. That's right. But what? And as many members. And? All the members of that one body, being many, are one body. The reason why people reject Acts 2.38 mm -hmm. is because they've been falsely doctrinated. Right. Misunderstanding what Jesus told his disciples That's in right. Matthew 28 19. 28 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The preacher quoted wrong. Yeah. He said, Jesus said, baptize in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Jesus didn't say that. Go ye therefore. Listen at Matthew 28 19, the Great Commission. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Teach everybody. Baptizing them How? In, in the name of the Father and, and of the Son and, and of the Holy Ghost. I'm a father, mm -hmm. I'm a son, I'm a husband, I'm a preacher, I'm a fighter, right. I'm a boxer, I'm a crippler, I'm a murderer. Mm -hmm. I have all those titles. That's right. But if I tell you to do something in my name, mm -hmm. you're going to put Jennings down there. That's right. Jesus said, baptize in the name mm -hmm. of the Father. The father. And of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are titles. That's right. But there's one name. That's it. Just like my name is one, Jennings. Mm -hmm. But I'm a father, son, husband. Mm -hmm. Father, son, husband. That's three right. titles. To who? One Jennings. That's right. God, here you have three titles. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. They didn't say it's three distinct persons in the Godhead. No. And you liars, the book didn't say that's a trinity. No, it didn't. Trinity have never been in the Bible. That's right. Liar. That's right. That's right. God bears the title Father. Father. What you mean, Father? The originator of all things. That's right. The creator. Lord of the world. Mm -hmm. Master of the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. God of the universe. Son. son. The title son is placed upon the Messiah because that body was the image, the shape, and the form that God dwelled in and it took on God's name. That's right. That's why he said, I come in my father's name. Father's name. God was in that body. That's right. It is written to it, God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world unto himself. That's it. Holy Ghost is the title of God showing the function of God. He's identified as a keeper or comforter. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. So the title, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, those three titles is connected to one name. That's it. That's why he says baptize in the name of. So in Matthew 28, 19, there was no baptism being performed. No. There was told what to do. In Acts 2.38, it was fulfilled when it was done. That's right. Listen. Acts 2.38, then Peter said unto them, repent. No, join the church. Peter said unto them, repent. Bow your head and raise your hand and accept Christ as your personal Savior. Repent. Pray a sinner's prayer. Then Peter said unto them, repent. That's what you folk do here in Jamaica. That's right. Many of you. Preachers say, make an altar call, pray a sinner's prayer, and you liars come up holding the hand of your smoking reverend. That's right. Go ahead. You hold his hand. Go ahead. Dear Lord, I'm a sinner. sinner. Save me. <laughs> Cleanse me. Wash me. White as snow. Mm -hmm. Then the preacher say, go on. You're a Christian, my friend. You ain't nothing. That's right. You ain't born again. Born again. When you say wash, you got to have water. That's right. You got an old dry clean religion. That's right. Old dry clean. And it still ain't got the stain of sin out of you. Amen. Prayer sinners. Peter said what? Then Peter said unto them, repent. He's no, join the church. Repent. The hour of decision. Repent. I open the church doors, and whoever want a home, I give you a home. Then Peter said unto them, repent. Touch the television and let God come into your heart. Then Peter said unto them, repent. Hold the preacher's hand and let God come in your heart. Then Peter said unto them, repent. You see all this hypocrisy out here? That's right. If you haven't obeyed what he's about to read, mm -hmm. you're nobody's Christian. You have never, if you bow your head and raise your hand, you ain't never been born again. Mm -hmm. 
If you've been sprinkled in a Catholic church, you have never been born again. Right. If you join some church, you ain't never been born again. Right. If you pray the sinner's prayer that don't even exist in the Bible, right. you ain't never been born again. That's right. You've been duped, you've been conned, you've been bamboozled, led astray. You've been deceived. Amen. Listen. Then Peter said unto them, repent. And what? And be baptized. Be and what? Be baptized. How much? Every one of you. That got your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your aunt, including your pastor. Every one of you. Every one of you. How? In the name of Jesus Christ. Not just Jesus' name. That's right. Not be baptized in Jesus' name. No, no. Like we explained last night, there's more than one Jesus. That's right. There is only one Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. The Apostle Peter said what? And repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For what reason? For the remission of sins. That's how you get your sins washed away. Washed away. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. television viewers. Amen. If you want your sins washed away, your whole body, you got to repent. That's it. You got to repent of all the wrong you've done. You ain't got to repent to me. You know what you've been doing, don't you? Don't you know what you've been doing, Jamaica? Yes, sir. Oh, the yeah. dancing, the partying, the drinking, the living together, not married, the fornicating, and all that type of stuff. Going to clubs, hair just wilding, popping your fingers, doing your thing. <laughs> yes, you know. Amen. Out there jumping around like a wild animal. That's right. You got to repent for that conduct. And then after you truly repent from your heart, mm -hmm. repentance, you feel remorse about your wrong. It is not just saying I'm sorry, but you feel it. You're remorse about your wrong. Then afterward, you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, Christ for the remission of sins, meaning to have your sins washed away or removed. Mm -hmm. Then afterward, you must take your time and seek the Lord for the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the evidence of speaking in tongues. If you don't know what the preacher said when you were baptized, yeah. I advise you to go back. That's right. You don't want to walk around assuming you were baptized right. That's right. No. No, no. Uh, this, this is too dangerous to assume. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the right baptism, mm -hmm. be baptized. baptized. Today, Amen. Jamaica got plenty of water. What's the name of that body of water out here? What is it? What is that water that where the beach is? Who is it? Portmore, whatever the body of water that's around around here, the Caribbean, whatever it is. Who? Haitia Beach. Well, I know it's water all over the place around here. Beautiful blue, beautiful green. Amen. That's right. I have baptized people in the Indian Ocean. I have broke ice in the wintertime to baptize people. And believe me, it wasn't fun. <laughs> I remember when folk come to me be baptized in the wintertime and the river was frozen. I said, you sure you want to be baptized? <laughs> he said, yeah, Pastor Jenner, we want to be baptized. You know, I, I, I had to repent because I actually tried to get out of it. I said, well, and I didn't lie because we didn't have no changing clothes there. I said, well, we ain't got no changing clothes for you to change in. <laughs> he broke his clothes open like Superman. Boom. He said, I got my clothes on right under me. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> we had to break ice. Amen. I didn't have no boots. Mm. I ain't had no boots and no winter clothing. I had paper thin paint mm. and a shirt with no T-shirt on under it. Freezing. Baptizing this fella in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> then, then after you baptize him, he backslid, <laughs> making me go out there in that water. <laughs> you gotta save your soul. That's right. You got one soul, young, middle-aged, and old. You have one soul. Mm -hmm. And you want to try to save yourself, as Peter stressed. Right. Well, on the day of Pentecost, he says, save yourself. From this untoward generation. Saving yourself. You're not waiting on your friends. You're not waiting on your mother. You're not waiting on your father. You're not waiting on to see what this one going to do or that one going to do. Save yourself. yourself. Anyone here that have never was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and if you were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, but you didn't repent, right. that baptism still is no good. That's right. Because the scripture plainly states, repent. 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 You got you to be sorry about your wrong. 
Right. Not only that, Jesus said in the time of this ignorance, God winked at, but now he commanded all men everywhere to repent. You repent. must be sorry about your wrong. After you repent, then it is a divine requirement to be baptized in water, your whole body covered mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus Christ. Not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost all in Jesus' name. No. Not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost upon the authority of Christ. That's right. Not simply in Jesus' name. That's right. The preacher must baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. That's, what, that's what Pastor Peter preached. Mm -hmm. Or the words of the Apostle Paul in the name of the Lord Jesus. Not Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. None of that. No, no. It is written in Colossians 3.17, Whatsoever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for listening, Jamaica. We thank you for your patience. We thank you for your time. If there's anyone here who wants to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, stand on your feet. Let me see who you are. Anybody want to get this baptism the right way? One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, brothers and sisters, this is something that everybody must have. Somebody say I'm a born again Christian. It ain't nobody a born again Christian unless you got it like the book. You don't have it like the book, you don't have it right. Remember that. You don't have it right. We're going to turn the remaining service in the hand of Brother Gary. He will let you know uh, exactly at what location uh, where we will be baptizing. And we're going to ask you to meet us there. And if you got changing clothes, fine. Because you're going to need them. Unless you just want to walk around wet because it will feel good in this heat. But Brother Gary will let you know exactly what location where we will be baptizing. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your time, Brother Gary. Praise God. We give thanks to God for the word. Thank God for all things that have been gathered, the word that have been spoken. Thank God for the truth of God. Thank God for the word and the hearts that have been pricked. And I trust that we might continue to hold to the word of God and make the necessary adjustments in our lives. This is very serious. It's life or death. It's good to hear the man of God preach the word, but it's better to respond. The end of all things are at hand. It's time for us to buckle up, know what we are about, don't watch somebody else. You have to make the decision for yourself and know that you are saving your soul. We're going to arrange a baptism afterwards. We're going to get a few brothers together. We might have to drive all the way to the Helter Beach uh, because the places around here, they're not renting their pool or allowing the pool to be used, but there are a lot of water around. So some way, somehow, it's going to be done. So afterwards, you just come and you give me your names and we meet and we arrange and see how best we can do it. I'm going to ask Elder Steele to come forward and just give us the word of That's by Portmore, yes? Hersha Beach? All right. All right, so afterwards you give the names and we organize and we head on there for those who want to be baptized. Elder Steele will give us a closing prayer. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. Eternal Holy Father, our great God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we give you thanks, O oh God, for today. Lord, we thank you for your word that go forth. Heavenly Father, you said the word shall not return unto you void, but it shall accomplish that which you please, and it shall, Lord God, prosper in the place that you have sent it. Lord God, today we thank you, O oh God, for the teaching of your word. Heavenly Father, that you have used your servant, O oh God, in these evilest days. O oh God, to shine the light. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, today that the light has shined in someone's heart. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. 
We pray you strengthen him, O God, that he may continue, Heavenly Father, to bring forth the word to the dying nation, Heavenly Father, to the nation that know not you. O God, and the truth have been hid, O God Almighty. Heavenly Father, we look to you today and we give you thanks. We pray, O God, that a blessing may be upon your children. We pray, O God, you'll continue to open their understanding. Lord Jesus, they may understand the word and walk in the word. As we are about to dismiss our service, we pray that a present may go with us. We pray that a present, O God, may lead us. We pray, O God, that a present may direct us. And Lord God, that your anointing may rest on us continually. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Remember, brothers and sisters, we'll be back 6 o'clock this evening. We hope to see you again. God bless you all.